Welcome to our 2023 Sunseeker 3010DS. Starting right in your back corner here, you get this one big storage compartment door. So we'll flip that open, see you straight through to the other side. That little plug there, you're gonna find those throughout your exterior compartments here. Those are just little drainage plugs. Just open those up, any water that collects in here will drain itself out. Little light up on the front side here. Just got that little push button on it to turn it on. Step forward, get your power cord inlet. So as you pop this open, you're going to find a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's going to line up with this notch here. Press those in together. That'll eighth turn to lock it down. Then you get the threaded collar in the back there to properly lock it into place. As you follow the cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are going to have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Down underneath it is a cable and satellite inlet. Coax cable plugs into there, fires up your TV location. Storage compartment under it, as you open that up, you get a little magnetic latch there, holds it open for you. In the back side, you're gonna find that water hose. Inside of the water hose is that park adapter, your 30 amp into one end, 15 amp to a standard outlet. This little air valve there would be for your airbags in the back here. So if you've got the unit loaded up with a whole bunch of camp and stuff, you can take some air, pump up those airbags, and just kind of improve your ride quality. Ahead from there, you get your city water connection. Water hose would plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. Ahead from there is your exterior shower, hot and cold water there, of course, the standard three foot hose, the standard head. In the center is a black tank flush valve. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes. So what you can do is take your water hose and plug it into here, turn on the water, open up your black valve, and that'll just flush out that tank for you. Down in the bottom, you also get that little service light there. And then right in the back, here you can see your sewer system. So that cap there, if you just kind of press on it, give it a pop out. Pop right on out of there, and your sewer hose just has those two ears on it there. Same ears that you got in your sewer connection there. So you can basically just take that, plug it into place, turn it until it locks in. Then you have this little port in the bottom. You can open that up. Your sewer hose then runs down through there. You can drain it all out. On the left is a black valve. Black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is supposed to be your toilet. Of course, it's going to be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to your gray. The gray tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically, cleaner water will dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Fuel inlet right beside us. And just big open storage here. Another smaller little compartment. And ahead from there is your generator. So if you open this up, oh, that's locked. So this key here, just stick it on into there, open her up. Okay, so all your controls for turning it on, you have the same set inside as what you have out here. So you have these two little locks there, you're gonna undo those and you can pop it on open. You're gonna press and hold the left side of that to prime it until that little red light turns on. Okay, right, then you're gonna press and hold start. That's fairly common for it to just kind of huff like that. Right, just prime it a little bit more. Once you're done, just press and stop to turn it off. And then those two little bottom channels there are going to line into it. Get it lined up and lock it back down. Okay. You have the same sort of switch inside. We'll kind of go over it again once you get inside. Front entrance, of course, to your driver's side. Then just around the front of the unit here. Your passenger door here as well. Your main entry door, right beside that, you get this compartment here. The same magnetic latches are going to hold it open. TV here is Bluetooth. It's also kind of your stereo as well. So the power button there is going to turn it on and get through uh, all your inlets or this button here, I believe. Cycle through all of that, connect your phone to it, play your TV through it, all that fancy stuff. You can pull it on out, kind of point it where you like it, and then right behind it there, you're also going to find that garbage bin, kind of accessible through that countertop inside. Once you're done, just pushing it in, kind of clicks into place, and you can close it back up. Straight up from there, you'll find your two exterior speakers. All right, so those just run off of your inside TV. Down underneath, just a little storage compartment. Inside that's another compartment. All right. Up above that's your hot water tank. So you just get that keyway there, you line that up, and you can pop it on open. All your controls for turning it on are just inside the unit. Before turning it on with either source, you just want to hit this relief valve right there. You should get that water coming out. If you're not getting any water coming out, there is a chance that it's empty, and you do run the risk of burning out your elements. So you just want to make sure it's full before firing it up. Once you're done, just lining up those two bottom posts, press it into place, lock it with the keyway. Do your fire protected outlet right underneath is your propane compartment. So as you open that up, you get your valve right there, front and center. Just turn it to open it up. Simple as that. 
exhaust for your furnace here. So if you're ever running a furnace, you just make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Fresh water inlet in the back here. So basically you just be popping this cap out, take your water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent there. Inside of this compartment, there's of course just storage. You also get that other uh, rear air valve for the this side bag. All right, and then you get this compartment back here. This valve right there is your fresh water tank drain. So you can see with that lined up, we've got it draining out. So if you just kind of take a peek underneath the unit here real quick, you can see it's going. Just close it off. That allows you to fill up your fresh water tank. This valve right here gives you the choice between running off of your tank, which it currently is, or you can point it up and it would be running off of this hose. So that would be for winterizing the unit. You get this little extra piece of hose back there that you can stick into your jug of antifreeze and just run your pump as you would to get all of the water through. When you are winterizing it, you do want to make sure that you pop that water filter out of there. So you just got this little wrench here so you can take that housing off of it, take that filter out, and you want to make sure that's replaced every year. Once you're done, just closing it back off. And then in the back, you get the other end of your storage compartments here. You get the same sort of little drain plug in the bottom there, the same sort of light up on that front wall. And then in the back of the unit, you are, pre, you are all set up already for towing. And straight up from there, you'll find that rear view camera. That is all hooked up already to your stereo. So once you put the unit in reverse, it'll show up for you. You also have the two blind spot monitors. So you get this little block right there. It's a little camera. Same thing on the other side for your blind spot monitoring. Making our way inside of the unit here, door just opens on up. This first step here, if you undo that, pop it on open, that's access to your batteries. Kind of right beside it here is kind of a, a battery control panel. So you have a bunch of relays and fuses back there. Not necessarily for the unit, but for uh, the truck. Battery disconnect switch here. So you can see with that pointed up, that's it turned on. If you're turned off to the side, that's it then turned off. And you can see it kills your motion sensing lights. You do have these motion sensing lights kind of throughout the unit. I believe you've got one in the bathroom as well as in the bedroom, maybe. These two light switches here, the one on the left is going to do your awning light. The one on the right is a porch light outside. I might have got that backwards but they do the outside lights. Your awning itself is on this switch here. Press and hold extend and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, we're gonna see a little black flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna stop. If you're to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric would be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. There's the flap and there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. Now, if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyway. So what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear. You're just going to pull straight down on it. Then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now, if you like that angle better because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring them back in, though, you want to make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. Then you can press and hold the tracks, and the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just going to watch to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind if you're awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So you want to make sure once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you're bringing it back in. Again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. And then up off to the side here is a little solar charge controller. So you do have the solar panel kit all set up and ready to go. You can see you're currently just charging. We've got 13.1 at our batteries. That's just because we're plugged in and got that charging voltage. Solar is also putting out 12.9. So that would be a charging voltage as, as well. It just kind of allows you to monitor what's going on there. This guy right here is your leveling system. As you can see with that sticker, ignition is required. So I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to turn that to the on position. Then you can see it turns on. You're going to press auto level. And then it just starts leveling itself automatically. While it's doing that, you're going to want to keep yourself outside of the unit just so that things stay stable and you don't throw off the computer there. Now, just with the suspension setup in the unit the way it is, it can be normal for it to pick up the front wheels here just for the sake of achieving level.
there we go so once it's done you get this little screen there letting you know that it's worked out right. then it'll come out of that screen you see that retract jack so you just press that and it would automatically bring, bring everything back up this little button there if you come into that just kind of gives you that manual mode allows you to calibrate it things like that really it's all set up for you to go so unless you have a problem you shouldn't really need any of that other side from the entry door we get your fire extinguisher a standard pull the pin point and shoot and then we'll come inside and we'll come right to the back here we get your control panel so on the bottom left corner we've got your slide out and as you can see there the slide room operation requires the ignition on which we've got on from that uh, last step here and then the parking brake set which i did do already so you can press and hold out and the awning will make it and the slide will make its way out once it's out all the way it'll just kind of stop itself in place so we'll get some clicks from the motors Like that and then we'll come to the back and your slide out switch back here is straight in the corner press and hold out the slide will make its way out a little bit different this slide once it's out all the way you'll just kind of hear some whines from the motors and they turn themselves off so now that we've got the unit opened up we'll go and turn that ignition off And just a note, if you've got that ignition turned on, you cannot operate your awning. So just got to have that turned off to run the awning. All right, light switches are in the, on the right side here. So the driver's side rear light, turn that light on, gives you a little service light kind of by your sewer system back there. Straight up from there, you get your kitchen light as well as your living room light. Arctic pack, that's basically some little heated pads that are stuck to your fresh water holding tanks as well as your sewer tanks. Just allow, turn that on, just kind of prevents them from freezing. A water pump, turn that on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Water heater on gas right there, turn that switch on, fires up on gas. If that check light there to come on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, just off, back on to reset it. Water heater on electricity is just right there. You turn that on, turns it on with electricity, simple as that. Monitor systems in the top left here, so LPG is going to be liquid propane gas. So as you press that, you can see you're currently full. Battery, we're currently C for charging, G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Fresh tank, as you fill that up, we'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray tanks. This is your generator controls on the right side here. So you can see you've just got that little hour meter. It lets you know how long it's been running for. It kind of allows you to keep track of your maintenance. Same sort of switch here that you had at the generator itself. You press and hold that stop prime. Once that red light there at generator turns on, you can press and hold start. It fires up. Once you're done, just pressing stop to turn it off. Um, we'll go through the slide out here real quick now. We've got your dinette here is obviously set up as the dinette. If you're to take your table here, loosen off this little stop. You can wiggle the table out of its leg, the leg then out of its base. There's three little ledges there that the table then sit onto. You'll take those two back cushions to fill in the table, creates your bed. You can see that you do have seat belts here as well. So for during travel, you can occupy it. Little storage underneath it as well. And then if you come up to the heads here, there's a little light switch. This turns on some LED strips. And then the storage across the top is all just wide open. All of your cabinets here, as well as your drawers, are all on anti slams. All right, so they're nice, closed, soft. Centerpiece here folds down. You get a couple of cup holders there. Again, seat belts so you can occupy during travel. You can also pick up the base here, flip it down for a bed. Across the front, you can see this is your bunk space. You've got this center close off piece that would come back. These two little latches there would hold on to your ladder so ease of access. Right in here, you're going to find this little curtain. It's got the little Velcro on it, would sit into these little dots, allows you to kind of close off that front cabin from the rest of the unit. The lights up here, just on their own center push buttons. Get another one on the other side here. You are set up for Wi Fi, so that's that guy there. Right inside of here, you're going to find your outlets for your power outlet for your Wi Fi, as well as your cable, your cable antenna. Turning that antenna on as well as the Wi-Fi, you just hit that little button there, turns on the green light, letting you know it is turned on. Up from there, you'll find HDMI as well as a cable and satellite inlet, so it just allows you to tie into your stereo. This pad right there is a little wireless charging pad. Set your phone down on there, and if it supports wireless charging, it'll charge up. The drawers here, like I said, they are on anti slams. And some storage space here. Underneath the TV is another little light. If you flip up the TV, you get access to a little storage compartment back there as well. This TV works the exact same as the one that you had outside. That's access to that garbage bin that you had outside. Another little light switch over here for those lights. 
The sink cover just flips on out, hot and cold water at the sink, of course. You also have the little shower head function here as well. More storage space, just mindful of drains and water lines. It's drawer space. And if you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, your water tank is just right back here. You can remove these four screws to take this bottom panel out, or you can just kind of reach down through there. Another little drawer space here. Microwave just pops on open, pretty standard, just like home, just kind of with the addition of the convection, so you can kind of cook in there. For the stove, the bifold cover just slips on back. You're going to press that knob light over there, then you can turn the knobs in over to high, and just as it clears the air of the propane lines, she'll fire up. There we go. Right. So the reason I say to turn on that knob light first is because that's what activates your igniter. So you can see we turn it on. It doesn't do anything if the lights aren't on. Once you're done letting it cool off, then you can close it back off. Storage up top. And inside of here, you're going to find that binder. That binder's got all of your owner's manuals, any keys, any remotes, anything like that. You're going to find right in there. The fridge is 12 volt. So as long as your batteries are charged, you're charging. This guy's going for you. Above there is your roof vent. So you get the knob in the front corner. is going to open it up. Just turn that to open. Once you have it set in place, you just push it up and that'll lock it in. Right. In the back corner is your fan switch. You have fan speed one, two, three, and four. And after four, if you hit it again, it just comes back to one. Turn it off. Hit off there. Little pantry space, as well as the little lazy Susie or active Susie, whatever they call it. Shower space here, so that travel latch, just slide that back. You can open it up and get the nice standard stainless head and hose with the couple of different um, shower head features there as well. Up in here, your light switch is just right around the corner. Straight up from there, you'll find your thermostat. Press that mode button, it'll wake it up. It's first going to come into fan speed. So fan, low or high, it's high and that's low. And after that, you hit mode again, it'll come down into cool. At this point, you can select your fan speed via an auto, which of course is going to use the high or low fan based on how far or close it is to its target temperature. And after that, you can select your low or high, of course. With your air conditioner going, you've got two different options. You can have this louver here closed, in which case we're using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air, or you can open it up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want that open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then you can close it off, start moving the air throughout. After cool, if you hit mode again, it comes into heat pump. I don't believe this unit has a heat pump installed, so that's not going to do anything. If you hit it again, it'll come into furnace, and it'll turn off the air conditioner, turn on your furnace. Furnace will be moving its air through all your little floor registers there. And if you have your fan on with the furnace set, it's going to run the air conditioning fan, so you're going to want to leave that in auto, and that'll run just the furnace. In your bedroom here, you do have the closet space on the other side. The lights are just automatic, kind of on those little switches there. So as you close the door, it'll turn themselves off. Central space is open. Behind the TV is another little storage compartment. Same sort of closet space in the back here. If you pick up the foot of the bed, you do get access to a little storage compartment. And then right underneath here, it's basically just for service, but you do kind of get a visual look at your fresh water tank. In the head of the bed, there's a couple of reading lights. They're just a little touch activated. So you press it once, it turns on the little base light. Press it again, it turns on the big light. Same light over there. Emergency exit back here. You're taking these two red tabs, flip them up, swing that window open, hop on out. Blinds throughout the unit, just kind of sit where you leave them. Once you're done, just give them a flip and they run back up. Roof vent back here as well. You just turn that knob to open it up, simple as that. So after furnace, we're just hitting mode again, comes down into off, just basically cycles back around. So now I'll come into your bathroom here. Once with this door wide open, it does magnetically hold itself, so you can kind of close off your bathroom from the rest of the unit. Inside here, right on the left, you get your light switch. Other switch beside it does your roof vent. Just turn that knob to open it up. This button back here just turns off the fan. So because we've got this switch down here, we're just leaving that one on. Little medicine cabinet in the back there back corner you get your GFI protected outlet test on the bottom reset on top so if you ever have outlets that don't work it's the first thing you should check toilet flips on open you get your flusher on the right side and then kind of in the bottom left corner there you can see is another one of those motion sensing lights sink cover slips on up hot and cold water of course this is a mobile head as well just kind of keep that in mind and then a little towel rack on the door and then lastly we'll just go over your alarms here you get your LP detector right at the end of your slide. 
propane's heavier than air, sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off. Just like a smoke detector would. And the smoke detector is right by our entrance, kind of. Simple as that. If you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call. 204-237-7272.